Hello and welcome to another episode of Earth 911's Sustainability in Your Ear. I'm Mitch Ratcliffe, your host, and this is another innovator interview. We're talking with David Wolf, who is the founder of Ocean Habitats Incorporated. They make a, a cool product called Mini Reef that fits, fits under docks, particularly along uh, developed coastlines uh, in the southeastern United States. They've uh, installed more than 4,000 mini reefs, and uh, they create a, an environment for shellfish, uh, small fish, and microorganisms to grow and uh, support uh, recovery of the uh, ecosystem under a dock. David, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, hey, you, uh, mini reefs are a really cool project, and you've got a, a long history uh, of, of working to get this out. But first, tell us about what a mini reef is and how it works. Oh, well, what a, what a mini reef is, is a, it's a device, a man-made device, obviously, artificial reef that reproduces, uh, it mimics the environment that you would naturally find in the prop roots of mangrove trees or uh, saltwater marsh, uh, grasses, plants uh, along the coastline. And it just kind of helps replicate that, that uh, nursery habitat where young crustaceans and fish grow up uh, before they head out to their uh, adult stomping grounds. And, and so it's it's kind of a matrix uh, made of a combination of rope and, and uh, it looks like PVC and other uh, materials that uh, provide the substrate on which the, uh, you know, the, uh, kelp and, and other kinds of uh, plants can grow as well as uh, shellfish can attach and start to process water. And that's the other benefit here of, of the mini reef is that all of that natural life filters the water. How much water does a, a mini reef uh, allow to be filtered a day? Yeah, on average, once it's fully developed, uh, which does take as much as a year uh, for those animals to get on, attach, and grow up to full size, uh, it filters on average 30,000 gallons a day, which is about uh, the average backyard swimming pool. And with 4,000 of those, that's quite a few swimming pools. Now, Yeah, <laughs> it's billions and billions of gallons a year. So you, uh, you started this back in the 1990s, uh, and uh, you know it's not easy to have an idea that's ahead of its time. But can you tell us about what happened when you first conceived this and, and, and the long road to getting 4,000 of them out? Yeah, well, th this was actually a – this grew out of a failure. Um, when I was in college, I needed, I needed some volunteer hours, and, and so I went to a research facility that was trying to do ocean ranching. We had the problem of all those filter feeders we already talked about attaching to the units. They got really heavy. It was hard to float them. They also got kind of brittle and uh, could break up in storms, which obviously you have a lot of in Florida. And so, you know, out of that failure, uh, kind of looking at what can we do with all this work that we've done, we had, you know, tons of data on uh, what was working and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. On the, the idea to kind of miniaturize it and put it in a protected area, like a man-made canal system where you don't have uh, huge issues with storms um, kind of came to the forefront. And uh, we, we started working on that. We were, we're working along those, those road that, that road until, well, ran out of funding. The idea was, a and little that was about 1998, time. I understand. So you, you, you worked on yeah. this for a few years and 1998 comes around, you run out of money. You sort of put it on the shelf. What brought yeah, it, back? it just died. <laughs> well, so what brought it back? Because you obviously have, have got it started going again. Well, I, I, when this failed, I, I went off into other ventures. Uh, I was in the real estate industry for years, um, and I had an opportunity to sell uh, the businesses I had built across the country. Um, and I just, I was looking for what do I want to do uh, with the rest of my life because I was only in my mid thirties. So I can't exactly retire then. And uh, yeah, I just thought about when is a time where like I really enjoyed getting up and doing something every day. And I remember, you know, obviously being in college, doing marine biology. Uh, working on this work, you know, when I was 19, I could get up at 4.30 in the morning to go do something, which was nothing else would, <laughs> would make me do that. So, yeah, but the older you get, the earlier you get up, too. You'll find yeah, out. that's true. But, you know, I I, uh, I decided, you know, this was a really good idea in the 90s. And I, I just recently moved back to Florida and uh, water quality wasn't any better than when I'd left. It had gone downhill further. And I thought, you know, instead of standing around going, nobody's doing anything about this, these politicians and this and that, why don't I do something about it? Because I, I do have this idea that's not far away from being usable. So I kind of brought it back around. So where are, where are these mini reefs installed generally? 
generally they're, they're underneath a boat dock uh, or, you know, small pier, uh, generally in a canal system. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, canal systems being a man-made waterway, uh, they're great for boats. They, they're not very good for life. As they age, they become more and more polluted and uh, support less and less life. Um, but the mini reef is able to start, you know, turning that around by creating that ecosystem in there and helping filter some of the water, giving young life a, a place to live. So we, we concentrate on that because that's, that's something that was destroyed in the past to be created, you know, a man-made environment like that. And we're trying to replace some of that ecosystem that we lost sometimes 75 years ago when that area was developed. So, so tell us a little about what's actually going on when the water is being filtered. So I know bivalves, uh, um, cockle shells, uh, oysters, things like that, uh, bring water in and filter it. But what's going on across the entire ecosystem in a mini reef? Well, mo- most of the animals uh, you know, are filter feeders. So they are, they are bringing in all the single-celled organisms that, that cause things like the water to be green, red tides, brown tides um, that people that live along the coast are familiar with. Um, they, they feed on these on these microorganisms. That's that's their food source. So 24 hours a day, they breathe the water in, um, pull all the food out of it, get the oxygen they need, and push. We'll call filtered water. I mean, obviously there could still be some contaminants. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't absorb everything, but that's what that's what they do. But there are also macroalgae on the on the unit that will go and just like the single celled animals that that we have uh, or single celled organisms that we have too much of, that that macroalgae will a lot of pollutants out of the water that's from us, you know, from fertilizers, that kind of thing. And just like plants on land, they, they produce oxygen. So they help oxygenate the water in the area, um, really improve water quality quite a bit. Now, a uh, uh, mini reef, uh, you know, uh, is priced between about $300 and $700. Uh, what's the difference in capacity or, or is it really more a matter of, of uh, fit uh, with the space that you're uh, looking to fill? Yeah, we came up with a larger unit uh, primarily for more exposed locations where you're going to have more boat wake or, or wave action coming, uh, you know, when the wind is the right direction, that kind of thing. Um, but also when we have a large dock, uh, people who really wanted to fill uh, their dock up with, with reefs, um, you know, we've put as many as 100 mini reefs under one large dock. Uh, and having a bigger unit just made it faster to accomplish that. Okay, uh, so but yeah, mini a, reefs, like a Lego approach. Yeah, yeah, they, they raft together. They can tie to one another and they just kind of ride up and down in, in wave action, that type of thing, uh, not really bumping into one another. So while the mini reef filters around 30,000 gallons a day and, and helps grow around 500, you know, fish, shrimp, and crabs every year, the plus unit will filter more like 70,000 uh, a day once it's developed and, and grow around 1,100 um, fish, shrimp, and crabs. So you, you definitely get a, a little bit more bang for your dollar there um obviously not every dock can can have larger units underneath of it so sure um you know we're actually coming out with a smaller one because there are some tiny docks that even the mini reef uh, can't go under so um there there are certain dimensions that that work for the mini reef um and so we're we're, we're slowly filling those in as we go along <laughs> and and, and the, then the other question is you know this uh, You've put it mostly in the southeast, but could this work in other parts of the country? You know, for instance, I'm speaking to you from the the Seattle area. Would I be able to use this in a colder water environment as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, We we have shipped units to uh, California and Oregon. Um, We've shipped them up the east coast all the way to Maine. The primary issue is that you don't have uh, a freeze over. Uh, Ice would definitely pull the units off of whatever they're attached to. So if, if it doesn't freeze, they'll still work. Colder the water, the slower the organisms grow. So the, the time scales of how long it takes to get them fully developed change a little bit. Um, but, you know, two or three years down the line, they'll be doing the same thing that something in the tropics is doing. Uh, it'll just take them a little bit longer to get there, they'll, but they'll be full of life and, um, you know, producing more fish and, and helping filter the water. So who generally purchases mini reefs? Is it, is it the dock owner or boat owner who wants to put something on the dock where their boat is? Yeah, it, primary uh, purchasers for us are, are private residences. Um, they're they're putting them under their dock in the back. Uh, it's so that when you know grandkids come to visit, uh, they can actually catch some fish, something besides catfish. Uh, for some of the people are putting it in because they, they want to help the environment. Um, they don't they don't like seeing Jello in the water behind their house. Basically, when we have major uh, bloom events, 
Mm-hmm. Um, we do also have city, county, uh, state governments. Uh, the EPA has actually financed a few units through uh, one of the national uh, estuary program uh, in Florida. Um, they've installed some. So, you know, we, we definitely get, you know, corporate stuff like marinas, that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's, it's private uh, individuals who have waterfront property. Now, when we were uh, exchanging ideas prior to this uh, recording, we, you also mentioned that there are some projects that our listeners might be able to support. Uh, you know, so people, obviously, most people don't live on the water, but they right. are interested in helping to, uh, to, to revitalize the ecosystems in waterways like this. Are there, uh, is there a way for somebody to visit your, your site and, and help install a mini reef with their financial support? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, we, we do have people who, who donate um, to have units built and we add them onto projects. Like we have a project in the Sarasota, Florida area where we are putting a large number of units in with some other nonprofits mm-hmm. to have University of South Florida and like Moat Marine Laboratories um, you know, do, do uh, scientific research on the animals on them, that type of thing. How well do they interact with the environment and, and uh, fight some of our problems? So uh, on our website, uh, we, we do have a, a page for donations. Um, it, it's kind of a, a general donation uh, area. Uh-huh. Uh, you kind of pick the amount you want, um, but all donations go towards putting more mini reefs, uh, you know, adding them onto orders that, that we already have going out. And, and does the donor get some sort of, of, of confirmation of what happened with their money? Uh, yes. Like as, as we have a, a, a project um, when it is completed, you know, everyone who, who donated extra units to that, we do like to send out, uh, some photographs and information about, you know, what, what's been done and, and how many extra units we, we put in the water because of uh, people helping us, helping us out that way with a project. So let me, uh, let's, let's wrap this up with a, a couple of questions about how you've seen the, uh, the environment change, the, the, the sea environment, the ocean environment in the Southeast since you graduated from college all those years ago. Uh, what's going on? Uh, what's your perspective on our progress or failure to pro- uh, make progress in, in protecting those wetlands? Well, un- unfortunately, uh, it's definitely not good news. Um, you know, I, I moved to Florida uh, in the early 90s. You know, by the time I, I, I got out of, of college in the late 90s to today, uh, there are far fewer uh, fish in the sea. Um, there are very few large, you know, that you're kind of, you're, you're reproducing large animals are hard to find. Uh, we have the intensity and frequency of things like red tide events and big algae blooms that really, you know, clog up uh, coastal waters have, have greatly increased over that time. It's gone from a, a rare event because of a, a busy hurricane season to kind of almost an annual event. Um, our, our coastal waters are definitely in decline and, and dying in Florida, uh, which is why I, you know, brought this product back out and got it finished because something's got to be done before it's too late to do anything. Well, uh, David, that's that's uh, great that you did that. That's discouraging to hear, but I think we can all uh, help make a step forward. Uh, and uh, I'd encourage everybody listening to take a look at uh, OceanHabitatsInc.com. Uh, that's all one word, uh, and Inc. is I-N-C. Uh, David Wolf, the founder of uh, Mini Reefs and Ocean Habitats. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us on the show today. Yeah, I really appreciate you you having me and helping spread the word about our, our work. Um, I well, appreciate it a lot. Keep it up and do come back and tell us more about what's going on as you uh, make progress. I definitely will. All right. Thank you. Uh, folks, that was David Wolf. He's the uh, founder of Ocean Habitats Incorporated. You can find that at Ocean Habitats Inc. Dot com. Uh, it's on the, uh, I, I think, called the internet. And uh, check out uh, our uh, uh, podcast introduction article. We'll uh, provide a couple of links to the find out how to support uh, investments in reef recovery down in the Southeast. Uh, this is Mitch Ratcliffe on Earth 911's Sustainability in Your Ear. We'll be back with another innovator interview soon. Thanks, everybody. And take care of yourself and the planet. Bye.